Welcome to another installment of Eyes on VIs. In this video, I'll answer a question that one of my friends emailed to me. Why doesn't this VI work? The answer to this seemingly simple question requires an explanation of the somewhat advanced topic of VI reference lifetime management. First, let's talk about what this VI is trying to do. Normally, when you open a VI, LabVIEW loads all of its sub-VIs before it's ready to run. A sub-VI cannot continue running after the top-level VI stops. There are times when you need a VI to load another VI as part of its execution. I call this dynamic loading. Unlike with a sub-VI, this approach does allow the dynamic VI to continue running after the VI that launched it stops. There are three common cases where dynamic loading is useful. One is for plug-in architectures. That's where you can have a new VI on disk plug in to an existing caller. Another case is deferred sub-VI loading. This is sometimes done for performance reasons, so that the top-level VI doesn't need to wait for all its sub-VIs to load before it starts running. The third common case is launching VIs that run in the background without user interfaces, often referred to as daemons. It is this third case that the subject of today's discussion is trying to achieve. Here we see how dynamic loading is accomplished using the VI server. We open a reference to a VI by its path on disk, invoke the run method, and close the reference. There is nothing inherently wrong with this code. The wait until done parameter defaults to true, so the launcher VI waits for the dynamic VI to complete execution before continuing, similarly to a sub-VI call. This is, however, not what the author of today's question was trying to do. He wants the launcher VI to start the dynamic VI running, but then continue running itself without waiting for it to finish. To do that, we need to wire a false to the wait until done parameter. We now have code that is almost certainly wrong. Do you see why? The problem is with understanding when the dynamically loaded VI leaves memory. There are generally three things that keep a VI loaded in memory. Having open callers, open references, or an open front panel. Somewhat counterintuitively, just because a VI is running does not mean it is guaranteed to stay in memory. Let's look at that last diagram again. After the open VI reference completes execution, the dynamic VI will be loaded into memory. After the run VI method completes execution, the dynamic VI is running. The tricky part is what happens after the close reference runs. At this point, if the dynamic VI's panel is not open, and there are no callers, no other open references to it, LabVIEW will abort its execution and remove it from memory. You might be thinking, what if we omit the close reference? This does not, in fact, solve the problem at all. The reason is that LabVIEW will not leak references. If your VI does not close all the references it opened, LabVIEW will automatically clean them up when the VI stops executing. So all you've essentially done is move the close reference to whenever the VI goes idle. So how do we keep the dynamic VI from being aborted and kicked out of memory? One common way is to open its front panel before closing the reference. Note that you have to do this here in the launcher, not by having the dynamic VI open its own panel. That's because you don't know how much of the dynamic VI's diagram will execute before LabVIEW aborts it. For the same reason, you can't have the dynamic sub-VI simply open a reference to itself. You could create a synchronization mechanism between the two VIs so that the launcher doesn't close its reference until after the dynamic VI has opened one of its own, but there is a simpler way. The trick lies with the other parameter to the run VI method, autodisposeRef. If you wire a true to autodisposeRef, then LabVIEW transfers the responsibility for closing the reference from the launcher VI to the dynamic VI. In this way, the dynamic VI holds a reference to itself, ensuring that LabVIEW will not abort its execution prematurely. Now, finally, we come back to the original question. Why doesn't this VI work? The problem is that it is closing the reference even though it has set autodispose ref to true. Since the autodispose ref merely transferred the responsibility not to leak the reference, closing the reference here completely negates the intended functionality of the autodispose ref parameter. There are perfectly valid reasons why you might want to close the reference under certain conditions. For example, if the run VI method fails, perhaps because the VI was not runnable, then it would be good practice to close the reference rather than leaving it up to the automatic leak prevention. Also, you might want to close the reference as part of shutting down the application. In conclusion, when using VI Server, you need to be aware of the lifetime of your references, by which I mean the time between when you open a reference and when it is closed. Since open references hold a VI in memory, they can have a profound impact on your application. You should be diligent about closing all references you open so that you do not accrue unneeded VIs in memory, especially if you have an application that runs for a long time without being restarted. 
That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for reading my blog, Eyes on the Eyes.